Okay, it's four o'clock. We're going to start the workshop. Uh, Commissioner Van Rienen sent a quick email and said that uh, some things came up and he will not be here. Uh, we're going to take the first item on the agenda, which was uh, talking about the budget introduction time frame. Uh, since that's something that he wanted to discuss, I don't think it would be right to discuss it without him being here. So let's uh, take that off of the agenda today and we'll put that onto the next workshop. Uh, one thing that we uh, uh, probably need to do in the, uh, at the next workshop is to kind of try to finalize if whether or not we're going to move the uh, election date one way or the other. Uh, if it doesn't happen, if we don't get moving on this, because we're right now we're right at a year away. Uh, so I think that uh, we probably have to make some decisions here real, real soon. Because I think if we have to do a charter change, it's going to take some time to make those things happen. And we have to give the candidates uh, a fair amount of, of time to understand. If anybody has any comments regarding any of the stuff that I told you related to the, <clears throat> the election stuff, please get those back so I'll wrap it up here. Very good. Okay. All right, let's go to the uh, actual first uh, discussion uh, about the Hollinsworth Manor name. In, in fact, I don't see anyone here from Hollinsworth Manor right now. Uh, one of the uh, uh, things that we had uh, talked about was maybe uh, doing a, a name change, an image change, and uh, of course with any time you make changes, there's uh, certainly consequences involved in anything. Any action, there's a reaction as we all know. And uh, I have up here on the board, uh, we were able to produce uh, Hollandworth Manor as you go in. Well, let me first start off by saying that the, the addresses in Hollandsworth Manor, they don't use row one through row 15. Every house uh, is Hollingsworth Manor. So if you're on row one, your house might be uh, house 11, Hollandsworth Manor. If you were on row 15, it might be 347 Hollandsworth Manor. There's no discussion about rows in any of the addresses that they use unless a, a resident actually puts 347 Hollingsworth Manor Row 10 for some reason. But I don't think that that's required in the address side of things. So when you have the main road coming in, and I'll kind of point to it over here. Where that? The main road, I'll spin it for everyone can kind of almost see it here. This is row A and then it splits and it'll go to row B and row C and it kind of creates a loop uh, as you go up and around. So row B and row A kind of merge together I guess back here at this point if you can even get through. I'm not sure if you can get through or not. No. You can't get through so you have a row A and a row B. You, you probably are more aware. Just of it. Okay and then uh, so you got row A, let's see that's actually B and C. Okay. Uh, and then of course you've got cow lane through here, and in each one of these rows, row one, row two, row three, row four, so on all the way to row 15. Once again, these rows have no address associated with them, uh, no postal service relationship to them. I, I think even from our financing here, uh, when we send water bills, a, a number with Hollingsworth Manor. A number with Hollingsworth Manor. So I guess the question comes in is if we change the name of the development per se and just if there's a, a total name change then all 350 uh, affected houses in this neighborhood then, then the families that live in each one of those houses all of their addresses would be changed at that point. So there were two questions they asked. Um, first of all starting out with um, why do we use the um, the row title? Number one, we have to define why it was even put in place for, for public safety, so they know what road it was on. And if then, they used like go to row ten, right? The uh, public safety would know where to go. Law enforcement, ambulance, everything that actually shows where the road is. Okay, and that's why it was laid out that way. But then my question was, who and, and how did the road come about? Um, the federal know? housing authority back in then. It was built during the war. That's how it was right. it was created, and it's the created. town obtained the, uh, the public uh, public areas. That's that's how it was I, I just wanted to get that clear before I. Mean, probably. 
take the time. I, I think that our decision would be based on if, you know, if there's no one here from the Hollinsworth Manor to give us any kind of feedback, but uh, Lou, I think you stated that uh, if we change the name from Hollinsworth Manor to Colonial Acres, every house in there would be affected. Uh, every address of every home would be affected. Now what we could do is you could actually change the name of row A, row B, and row C to create a different name and it wouldn't affect any physical address. Do uh, we make a change on uh, Booth Street similar to the Booth Manor or something? Now, Booth Street is still there. I guess I mean, Booth, South Booth Street Booth Manor is, is the same. Lane. There was something that, that uh, took place in Stephen and Devons didn't uh, affect anything by making the name change. I'm just trying to relate to the Berkeley, nope. Berkeley Boulevard. It was only changed ceremoniously. Yeah. You know, but not Belfeling, not that it's still South Street. I think the most recent change, well, Rudy, Sheffield Park, they had a lot of trouble there. Right. And that was changed to Rudy Park. I don't think that affected the address numbers or anything there at all. Not like this, have a separate address. Well, I think that the people that lived in Sheffield Park if their address was 17 Sheffield Park, it did change to 17 Rudy Park. I don't know if that's well, right. They have streets. Street. 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 They have street names. Oh, it's a street name. So it didn't affect their their actual yeah, license. It was just the name of the uh, developer. Yeah, but not the uh, street. Yeah, that's great. I, I don't really, I think we need uh, some input from the neighborhood to see if they're willing to uh, I know Go a, through the a lot I look, talked to or heard about it, loved the idea of getting rid of the row 10, row 8, whatever. Um, but I wasn't aware until what you just said today about the addresses all being Hollingsworth Manor. So if we're looking to change the appearance and um, the whole outlook of the neighborhood, what if, if we had to because it did affect so many people and could not change this, the name, kept the same name, changed it with nice signing and put a piece of history under it, like a tagline that made it feel better if we can't do, because it is an expense, like you're saying, was I was not aware of the address mm -hmm. part. I, I think we could certainly uh, uh, put better signage for them or new signage. That would be, I, I think that would be certainly an easy way to do it, but I just don't know if that's so even. I'm, I'm saying, you know, even if you change that, I guess uh, uh, personal data has to be changed with Social Security and a lot of other things. I guess you have to change your license. Uh, what? Difficulties come with that, other than a few things we mentioned. No, well, for example, every map and every document that is utilized by law enforcement or a public agency would have to be changed to reflect the new addresses, including the Department of Emergency Service and all that. Google Earth, um, um, the uh, map company, what's the map company? ADC. ADC, all those types of things would change. But the biggest impact would be on the number of people and the number of documents that they have that have to reflect. I mean, just imagine if you had to take, you moved, and every document you had, you had to notify your employers, your Social Security, everybody, who uh, health care, on and on and on. I think I gave um, Commissioner uh, Blonsky just a quick list of all the things of impact, you know, that would do it. And I'm not sure how, how, people accept it, but it was to be a, a, be a material. Yeah, but that in itself would require each resident to do an awful lot of work to go along with the change, like their own. Now see, it would be bad if you had, if you had a, the majority of the residents here said, we're willing to do all that, then that's fine, but you got you got a thousand, thousand people who live down there, mm -hmm. or close to it. But if you're for so, changing you know, the street, they, they don't have to do that no, no, because the physical address the matter, matter, then. Mm -hmm. to Hollingsworth Manor. Right. If you know, so you could still change the street name. Yeah, ABC and, and all the roads. Uh, we would sort of change all the maps. And well, it would be like a new development coming to town, and that has to be added to Google Earth and the new 
Well, that seems to be a new development. We did that, I was telling the mayor about Maple Avenue. Originally, um, before there was any houses on, when you get out over the North Street Bridge, you look to your left, that's Parkway. Right. Well, to the right was Parkway too, but there was no houses on it. So when that became a development, and I think uh, Elmer Justice was the one who developed that, before uh, uh, any house was built, I had pulled the plat and found out that originally when Park Circle and all that was laid out, the Elton Heights, that was Maple Avenue, but it was never named Maple Avenue. So we named it Maple Avenue then. So the very first house that moved in was Maple Avenue. Now all the houses that are in there is the infill in that new development of Maple Avenue. There's no confusion because there's only one Maple Avenue. So it was easy because when those people gradually moved into the four houses there, they just, they just did it. But if you went in there now, you have all those people change everything. I, I caught it before it happened. Now this is like a lot of, like, I don't know, 20 times more people, you know what I mean? Maybe more than that. That's a lot of people that would be affected. But if you change the names of the streets, it would only affect, uh, you know, mapping and, you know, stuff like that. Could we, could we, send uh, with the water bills uh, a questionnaire and, and the water bills are, are sealed. They're sealed. Yeah. There's a, a field since the rates are no longer on it, but it wouldn't have the yeah, no one worried if you're talking about a questionnaire. But well we can send out a questionnaire. I mean you just have to send so it out that way. It's 315 houses in there. 46 yeah. households. Okay. I think we need to get some buy-in from the residents themselves. I, I agree. I, I think right now we're just uh, we're trying to come up for ideals for them, and, and they need to buy in and uh, show us some uh, that they're they're interested in that also. So these draft letters to go to each one of the residents out there instead of trying to put it on the bill. Well, see, it'll have to be addressed to tenant because probably more than fifty percent of the houses are would go to any place in New Jersey or Delaware or anything. No, but I'm saying we need to property. notify the tenant and the property owner. You need to have to because you went with the property owners, so I'll say okay. Well, we but the tenants are the ones that be impacted, not the property owners. Sure. Huh? Right. All right, very good. Let's uh, okay. let, we'll work on that. Anyone from so the audience have any comments about Hollingsworth okay, uh, Manor? Could you just change the name, put a sign up, whatever it may be, also and a little sign at the bottom, AKA Hollingsworth Manor? Well, you, you know, Earl actually <laughs> drew me a little photograph. <laughs> That's what he was. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, whatever name we make it, instead of having the rows number one, two, three, just a signage that says row one through 14, Hollingsworth, Heights, or whatever name, we're gonna change it. And then people know on that side and then on the other side the same, uh, identifying so that when you do go around, you at least won't say where is one to 15 or wherever, 114, good thing. Very good. All right, the next thing on the uh, list, Lou, we had the American Tower Lease Agreement, and I think you had some comments, and I think that John I, has... Uh, actually, I think John looked at it, but there's language in this agreement that I don't like, and I would not recommend it to support uh, except, um, actually, the, the actually existing lease that we have is Nextel Communication, but actually the, the successor there is, is this American Tower. And actually, their initial uh, term and uh, additional five-year terms go to 2024. And if we don't terminate at the end of each renewal, they can go for uh, five more five-year terms. So I don't know why they want to extend it because they're actually pretty well locked into it. But one of the things that allows us to do is terminate uh, with notice, and, and they're trying to cut this off unless there's a material default on the pot on the tenant. We can't terminate. We, we don't want to have that in there. And, and also, there's they have language in here. There's also a confidentiality provision. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. 
But there is, uh, just to highlight without saying what it is, there's things in here that allow them to do on our property that I would not allow them to do in terms of access because we have our property secured for a reason. And right now, when AT&T or American Tower or any of their tenants, they have a way to get in there. Their service people come in the back and they get in. But we don't allow access to anybody. It's just their service people. Mm -hmm. That's the way I want to keep it. I yeah. don't want to allow any tenant to get in there because it's a it's a treatment facility with with you know secure stuff. Yes. Well, let's so, do this. Uh, can you and John work out the details? So we'll and work out some. Uh, you guys have any? Feels you guys okay with that? Yeah. All right. Very All right. good. Any comments about the uh, lease agreement out in the audience? And we don't know anything. I don't know. I know nothing. Okay, the uh, Planning Department 2014 Annual Report. Come on down, Miss Jean Minner. Tell us something about it. Tell us something good. Looks like you want copies of the uh, report. So, once again, um, uh, the land use article under the Annotated Code of Maryland requires that the planning commissions prepare, adopt, and file an annual report for the local elected officials. Um, so the planning department prepared this for the planning commission to approve it at their main meeting. And what it does is summarize activity in the um, planning department and the building department. Um, it, it meets the requirements of what the state wants and they uh, like to keep track of the growth going on in the state. So and it's, it's helpful for you too to also see in the past year, the activities that we've had um, with respect to building. Um, it lists uh, the different departments we have, um, the committees, the planning commission, the board of appeals, their memberships. Um, your, your P5 says architectural, historic and architectural review committee. It's actually the historic district commission now um, that, that's been changed. But it gives a nice summary of the activity and uh, the annexations and that sort of thing. Very good. It doesn't cover the other things that I use, it just rants and that sort of thing. This is more just what the Maryland Department of Planning wants to say. Do we have any, uh, the, the Historic and Architectural Review Committee is uh, fully staffed as we speak today? Yes. And what does AICP stand for? American Institute of Certified Planners. Very nice. It's a professional certification. Do you know if we're ahead of schedule uh, compared to 2014 as far as permitting in 2015, or is that something that? As far as permitting, well, I'm looking at uh, like per, a build residential building permits being issued in 2014, and I know you don't have any of the 2015 information, uh, but I just didn't know it, if it, it was. It depends on the activity and the economy. Mm -hmm. I know we're, we're seeing more activity commercial, the small commercial enterprises. Um, I am just seeing a few more of those this year. Um, uh, the residential is still relatively flat. Mm -hmm. So some of the uh, developers are trying actually different building products to see if they can place sales uh, onto their, um, into their subdivisions. So. Very good. Any questions for Jean on the uh, planning report? Good job. Thank you, Jean. Great. Thank you. I have extra copies of the videos. Okay. Someone out in the audience might want one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sam might want one. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, and, and lastly, we have uh, the Memorandum of Understanding the Town of Elton and State Highway Administration for the Wayfinding Signs. And we asked Todd Fry to be here. Uh, Todd who? Todd Fry is our engineer for this project. And um, Todd and I had talked earlier, and uh, Todd had expressed some concerns, which I'm sure everyone here would probably agree with, that the time frames under which this uh, these signs to be installed is too tight for September 30th, 2015 for the uh, um, 
highway did what we find signs and at least two interim trailblazing signs and then by uh september 30th 16th the remainder or eight of the trailblazing signs we want to move that up to december 30th that gives us an additional 90 days for each one of those time frames because it once we find a vendor that can produce the signs then all the shop drawings have to be reviewed by the state highway administration and from our experience i think it takes a rather a, a extensive amount of time for them to actually respond assuming that even if they're critical of the design and the shop drawings have to go back again the, t the time frame it, it will eat up all your time because after that things have been approved the vendor still has to put it on a schedule for production so it will take time then and then once it goes into production and delivery then we actually have to schedule a uh, uh, the installation of it. So I mean, it, it's just a very a laborious and tedious process. But uh, other than that, I think the language is pretty much like it's always been. Todd, what do you want to do? What date do you want to push that back to? I, I agree with Lewis. I think that, I mean, September 30th is, is doable if everything fell into place and went smoothly. Again, with this project, State Highway has not been as much responsive. So I think adding those additional 90 days is, is just beneficial so that we don't run into a situation where that time lapses and the state comes back to though you got to start over this whole process so that's my recommendation you know the same as lewis is push it back to the end of the year and do the same thing for the um, second row um, yeah the top trailblazers trailblazer sign which is uh, we go to december 31st of right. 2016 just to give us some little bit of some wiggle room in case it does take some time for the vendors to get the shop drawings approved from the, the uh, state uh, and you know getting it all lined up in terms of getting a contract with the, the contractor to install these signs and get the work done. Uh, I think it's just prudent to go ahead and extend that deadline. Anyone sound feel good, good about that? We have money in the budget to do one. Well, I, I'd say whatever whatever you guys recommend uh, only makes sense. Okay, that's it. All right, well, listen, this was uh, one of the fastest. Yeah, I have to send a comment back to the state highway, and our comment will be we have no changes except for those dates. So uh, actually, the memorandum will actually come back to the board for approval with those date changes. So you can see it again, but hopefully that will get that third way that way. Very good. Well, this workshop is uh, over. Thank you.